Hello friends. There are six different threat states in Java. New, terminated, runnable, blocked, waiting, timed waiting. When multiple threads in your application goes into the blocked state, there is a very high chance your application can become unresponsive. So in this talk, let's discuss what makes a threat to go into a blocked state, how we can go about diagnosing it, and how to identify the root cause, right? Okay, what makes a threat to go into a blocked state? Friends, in Java, there is a synchronized keyword. That is, I can mark a method as a synchronized method. Take a look at this example. There is a, there is a method called get data. It is synchronized. And internally, what it's doing is it's invoking another method called as a do something. Whenever a method is marked as synchronized, JVM is going to allow only one thread at any given point in time to enter into that method for that object. If other thread starts to come and they try to enter the get data method, a synchronized method, they are going to be put to the blocked state. So let's look at this example. Let's say a thread one comes. Now JVM is going to check whether there's any other thread executing this get data method. No. Currently, there's no, no other threads are executing this get data method. So thread one is going to be allowed to enter in. So now thread one came in. Let's say thread, thread one is going to invoke them to do something. So it is, it is working on the do something. At this moment, let's say another thread comes, a thread two comes. When this thread comes, is it going to be allowed to enter into this get data method? Answer is no, because the synchronized method, only one thread is going to be allowed to enter. But if it's a non-synchronized method, yes, the thread two is going to be allowed to enter. Now let's say for some reason, the do something method is a rogue method. It takes very long time to complete, right? Let's say it's taking um, 40, 50 seconds or even two, three minutes to complete. Now at this point, thread two is in a blocked state. Now let's say another thread comes. Will it be allowed to enter? No, it's not going to be allowed to enter. Another thread comes. It's not, all, it's not also not going to be allowed to enter. So like this, if multiple threads keeps coming, they're not going to be allowed to enter. They all will be put into the blocked state. Until the thread one exits from that get data method, all other threads are going to be put in the blocked state. So just this is an example of synchronized method. There are synchronized block. And if you're going to use a concurrent locks and, uh, and API in JDK, then also the threads are going to be put in the blocked state. But the conceptually it is the same, right? I want to give you a real world analogy parallel to this. Let's say your house, there is a lock to it and there's only one key to enter into the house. Let's say your wife has locked the house and she has gone out. And now let's say you coming to, uh, after working from your office long as you're getting to the home and you try to open the house, house is locked. The key is not with you. What's going to happen? You are going to be blocked. You are going to be standing on the doorsteps. Let's say if kids comes, they are going to be kept in the doorsteps. Until your wife comes back and gives the key to open the door, you wouldn't be able to enter the house. It's kind of a similar analogy. Okay, so now we will look at a real problem that has happened in a real enterprise and how to go about troubleshooting it. Right? Friends, whenever this kind of unresponsiveness happens, you want to capture a thread dumps. Thread dumps are the best way and the non-intrusive way, very lightweight approach to diagnose these sort of problems. And friends, there are eight different approaches to capture a thread dump. I'm going to share the link for that in the description. You can use uh, tools like, uh, which is part of the JDK. There's a JSTAC tool, which you can use for capturing a thread dump. Or you can use a YC, an open source script, which can capture three snapshots of thread dumps in a gap of 10 seconds. Along with it, it's going to capture other artifacts as well, which can help you to troubleshoot all the, all the performance related problems, right? You can use whichever the approach you want to use. So use the thread dump, capture the thread dump. And then you can use the thread dump analysis tools. Say, for example, there is a fast thread is in kind of a uh, solution which is available. So there, they are free tier, which is given. So this is how the tool looks. So you can go ahead and then upload your thread dump, which you captured, right? So now let me go and upload a sample thread dump, which we captured. So now I'm uploading a thread dump. I selected the thread dump and now I'm uploading. So now the tool parses the thread dump and then it generates a kind of uh, a report for me. See, uh, it has a lot of data, but what you want to be focusing on, you want to focus on this error icons in the report. Wherever there is error icon, that means it's a suspicion the tool has detected and you want to look on it. And if you see here, there is a section called blocked threads graph, right? Here it shows all that whenever the thread gets blocked, it's going to display them, 
right? What are the graph? Here, what it paints is basically paints a transitive dependency graph of what threads are being blocked and who is blocking it, right? Here you can see it shows in a fairly simple English. On this line number 455, on this class, on this method, 646 threads are being blocked. And here are those 646 threads, which is getting blocked. And this is the guy who is blocking all the 646 threads. So he's the culprit. And these are all the victims, right? Because there's something this thread is doing. It's taking very long time on a synchronized method. So other threads are not able to enter. So kind of a 646 threads are being blocked. In fact, this is a problem that happened on a real enterprise. In fact, here 646 threads are blocked. What is a thread? At the end of the day, behind every thread, there is a customer waiting. So that means right now at this point, just on this JVM alone, 646 customers are waiting for response. Okay. Now let's look at one of the thread to see one of the blocked threads, what it's doing. To see what it's doing, I can click on this. And I'm going to click on this. I'm going to see the stack trace of this thread. As you can see, this thread's originated. It started up and it's going through this Apache Tomcat. Now you can see it is coming. And in this filter, you can see there's a server, uh, solid response duration filter. It is trying to invoke this random UUID, right? And friends, this is the API that random UUID we all use as the developers to generate the random numbers. Friends, be advised that this is a synchronized method in Java, right? So someone has uh, acquired this lock, so it has got, it, it didn't release. So this thread is getting, getting to the blocked state, right? Let me click on some other thread. Right, some other thread stack trace. Okay, so this also thread come, it originated, it's also coming to the same servlet response duration filter. It's trying to invoke the random UUID. You can see it is getting into the blocked state. Right? Someone acquired the lock, didn't release, due to which like 646 threads are being stuck. So who is the culprit? Who is holding on to this lock and not releasing it? He's that guy. So let's click on him. Let's to see what he's doing. Friends, you can see this thread came, it is progressing. And now we can see this thread in some other part of the code. It is trying to generate this random UUID. It is invoking this function. Here it has acquired the lock. And after acquiring the lock, it is progressing. It is moving along. And friends, be advised that when you use this random UUID, the JDK, this library, this API, does not generate a random number for us. What does it do is it delegate this call to the underlying kernel to generate a random number. So in the kernel, there is a concept called entropy. So to generate random numbers, the kernel needs certain noises, right? If, if it's a laptop, it looks for the mouse movements, the keyboard strokes, the noises made by the device driver. It looks for these signals to generate a random number. So if there's a lack of that entropy, then the random number generation is going to slow down. In that case, you have to install some special hash algorithms to accelerate a random number generation. So this, in this particular case, that entropy was locking, so that random number generation was slowing down due to which the entire application was coming to a grinding halt. After seeing this, they installed the ash algorithms on the kernel and then the problem went away, right? So this kind of gives us how we want to be going about troubleshooting the blocked threads. And friends, if you happen to like this video and if you want to learn more about Java performance and troubleshooting, I would recommend you to attend my JVM masterclass. The link for that is given in the description. Thank you guys.